we talk about the axillary artery, um, which is going to be a little bit tricky. I've got lots of pipe cleaners. Um, the axillary artery is interesting because it, it, it has some classical descriptions about it. it. It helps us start to talk about the blood supply to the shoulder region, to the scapula, to the thorax and things like that. Um, but it's not the axillary artery I want to talk about as such as its branches. So I'm going to have to make its branches somehow. Um, I haven't really thought this through yet. Now, um, when I say axillary artery, do you know what I'm talking about? Um, the aorta, right? I don't want to take him apart. It takes ages to put him back together again. Well, oh, actually, this might not be too bad. So we have the aorta, um, and the aorta, as it arches around, it gives off the brachiocephalic trunk to the right, and the subclavian artery comes off that on the right side, and on the left side, the left subclavian artery comes straight off the arch of the aorta. Now we change the name of this blood vessel as we go, don't we? So the subclavian artery becomes the axillary artery, becomes the brachial artery as it goes into the upper limb. So, um, what we're seeing here is we're seeing the subclavian artery popping out on the left side between the anterior and middle scalene muscles with the brachial plexus. Now, we can see the same thing over here. Um, this is the right side, this is the left side, so you're going to have to use your skills of 3D transposition because I'm going to have to talk about the two different sides just because of the models I'm working with. But the subclavian artery, as it passes the first rib, we change its name and call it the axillary artery, and then it runs through the axilla, you know, the armpit. So it runs through the axilla, and then, actually let's take this off again, so this is axillary artery here, now we're seeing the scapula, so this is um, subscapularis muscle, and then we're seeing the teres muscles here, so teres major and teres minor. Now when the axillary artery passes the teres major muscle, it's then in the brachium, it's then in the upper arm and it becomes called, it gets called the brachial artery. So the axillary artery, actually well that's come off there, look that's just by the first rib. So that section there, that's the axillary artery running through the axilla. And the axillary artery is classically described as having three parts. And the first part has one branch, the second part has two branches, and the third part has three branches. And those branches go off and supply blood to this region around here. So there's a fair bit of complexity in terms of blood supply to this region. So if we think about the axillary artery, if we look at its branches and take them one by one and talk about where they go and what they do, it'll, it'll like break it down a little bit or give you, gives you like, Gives you some knowledge, gives you some logic, that sort of thing. Right, um, pectoralis minor here. This is pectoralis major, the big muscle of the chest. This is pectoralis minor. As the axillary artery runs posteriorly, uh, runs posterior to pectoralis minor, that's what splits it into its three parts. So the first part of the axillary artery is running between the first rib and this medial border of pectoralis minor. That's the first part, so one branch we'll look at there. And then posterior to pectoralis minor, um, that's the second part. And then when the axillary artery continues to run from the lateral border of pectoralis minor out you know, continuing on its way, that's the third part and the last part of the axillary artery, which has three branches. It's not terrible. The third part's actually pretty straightforward. The first part's very straightforward. It's the second part. This is a little bit weird. Well, we'll see how we go, right? The first branch from the first part is called the superior thoracic artery. Is that easy to remember because it's superior thoracic? I don't know. It's a little branch. It's a little branch, and it, I probably need to cut this. And it runs kind of um, from the first part of the axillary artery, or maybe something like that. Um, and the superior thoracic artery runs kind of medially towards these first two intercostal spaces here, so it's going to innovate the muscle, uh, supply blood to the muscles there. Um, this here, 
This big muscle is serratus anterior, running from the scapula to all of these ribs around here. It's the big, big boxer's muscle that pulls the scapula anterior around the rib cage, and it's also described as supplying some blood to the superior parts of serratus anterior. But that's the superior thoracic artery, that's the first branch of the axillary artery. All right, so next, remember that the second part of the axillary artery is posterior to the pectoralis minor muscle. And the two branches of the second part pop out from there. We've got the thoracoacromial artery, which is gonna pop out on this side, so medial to pectoralis minor. Um, no, and then we have the lateral thoracic artery, which is gonna pop out on the lateral side of pectoralis minor. Now it's the thoracoacromial artery that's a really busy boy. Um, thoracoacromial, right. So easy, it pops out and gives off like four branches. Now one branch is gonna run um, with, back to the clavicle and all the way back to the sternoclavicular joint over here. Um, now thoracoacromial, so thoraco it's involved in the thorax and acromial it's involved in the acromion. You remember that here's the clavicle up here, here's the, uh, the acromion of the scapula. So it's going to run back to the, the coronoid. Let's have a look on the other one. So here we are on the right side, um, here's the clavicle, um, here's the scapula here. So the thoracoacromial artery is also going to send branches back to the coracoid process, back to the acromion. It's going to send some branches across to the glenohumeral joint itself. So it's going to get back to the scapula and what have you. Now the scapula is surrounded by and covered by anastomoses of arteries. There are arteries ringing around here. So the arteries that we're talking about, the branches of the axillary artery are going to contribute to this, but other arteries are also going to supply blood to the scapula. So there are a lot of anastomoses around here supplying blood to the muscles and the other structures around there. So the thoracoacromial artery, so think acromial, is going to send branches back towards the acromion in this region here, so these bits. Thoraco, it's also going to send branches to the thorax. So to the upper anterior thoracic wall here, to pectoralis major in this region here. So thoracoacromial, upper thorax, these guys, to you know the deltoid muscle over here. Oh, oh, deltoid, that's going to put on the top there. To the deltoid, acromion, that sort of stuff, right? That's thoracoacromion, also to the clavicle and the sternoclavicular joint. And the lateral thoracic artery is going to run, that, that's going to run with the uh, kind of the, the lateral border of pectoralis minor to the lateral chest. So again, it's going to supply blood to the pectoral muscles, but also to the lateral breast and other structures in the upper thorax around there. So lateral thoracic and thoracoacromial arteries, they're the two, the two branches of the second part of the axillary artery, and they're busy boys. So superior thoracic's going over there, thoracoacromial's coming out there, going back to the clavicle, sending another branch back in there to the coracoid process. Something like that. Lateral thoracic then is, it's kind of running out this way. It's the, it's the lateral thoracic artery that tends to be um, a little variable in origin, but like I say, it's classically described as being from the second part of the axillary artery. So that's the first part, second part. I've only got the third part to worry about. There are three branches, but it's not as bad as it sounds because the, the, the third branch gives off two circumflex humeral arteries, an anterior and a posterior um, circumflex humeral artery. Right, we'll pretend they do, the, you know, artistic license here, right? I'm just using that to attach me. Actually, that's not very good. But still, artistic license just so I can attach me. Bike cleaners to something. Mm -hmm. But imagine this is a branch of the axillary artery 
and the anterior circumflex humeral artery runs around the surgical neck of the humerus. Remember the, the anatomical neck is up here where we've got this groove, the surgical neck is the slendering bit there. And then there's a posterior, uh -huh. there's a posterior circumflex humeral artery. And we, of course we see these, these circumflex arteries at many joints, don't we? Uh, and the anterior and posterior circumflex humeral arteries wrap around, and of course they meet each other, form anastomoses. Then of course they're going to send off branches up this away. They're going to get to the structures of the glenohumeral joint. They'll supply blood to the overlying um, structures of the shoulder region. You know, the muscles like the deltoid muscles and all these guys around here. So those are the posterior and anterior circumflex humeral arteries. So the subscapular artery arises a little bit before these guys. And um, here's the scapula here. And hopefully you'll remember that on the anterior or deep surface of the scapula, uh, there is the subscapularis muscle, which is one of the rotator cuff muscles. So this artery is going to run, the subscapular branch is going to run with the lateral border of the subscapularis muscle, and it's gonna go and try to get to the dorsal scapula around here. And uh, it's going to then contribute to the anastomoses of arteries surrounding the scapula, which maybe we'll talk about one day if my, if my pipe cleaner skills get better. Um, but actually that's part of the question. So it gives off two branches, and the branch that runs around to the dorsal scapula is called the circumflex scapula branch. Makes sense, right? But there, there, there is then also a thoracodorsal branch can I get you to stay there? I can't, can I? Um, and the thoracodorsal branch is going to kind of run down towards, kind of down towards the inferior angle of the scapula down there. Um, and that's going to get to latissimus dorsi is around here. And right here's the latissimus dorsi there. So it's going to get around to supplying blood to the upper part of latissimus dorsi and stuff like that. So these are uh, two branches of the subscapular branch of the axillary artery, the circumflex uh, scapular branch and the thoracodorsal branch. They're both kind of going dorsally. And that's it. Those are your branches of the axillary artery. Your conceptual understanding of this is more important than worrying about where the individual arteries exactly are, because it's biology, so everything is a little bit variable anyway. And you see, so what you've got, the concepts you need are where the axillary artery exists, so where we call that blood vessel, the axillary artery between those two points, um, how we describe the three parts based upon um, its position relative to pectoralis minor muscle, and then the fact that it has, you know, the, the first branch in, in the first part, two branches in the second part, three branches in the third part, that sort of thing. And the concept that those branches are going to anastomose, they're going to link together and join up and join up with other arteries we haven't talked about. They're going to supply blood to the muscles of the anterior superior, the upper thoracic wall, um, to, the, to the lateral breast, to the axilla, to the glenohumeral joint, and also back to the scapula, so the muscles of the shoulder region in general, and to the, the structures of the shoulder region in general. And, of course, it looks very, very complicated, it is very, very complicated, but we see this same theme when we get to any joint, any joint in the body, if you look at the knee, you see the same. You see a whole bunch of arteries um, before and after the joint, and they all anastomose and link up. It's a collateral circulation around that joint, so we're not just reliant upon the blood flowing through that single blood vessel. Um, okay, so the first branch is the superior thoracic artery, and then the second part has uh, thoracoacromial and lateral thoracic arteries and the third part then has anterior and posterior circumflex humeral arteries and the subscapular artery. Those are the branches of the axillary arteries we run through the axilla. All right? And a, yeah, anyway, you know, you see where they are, you've got an idea where they go. Golden. I think, maybe. 
see you guys uh, next week. Let's see if I can tidy up my pipe cleaners a bit.